things that we can do daily to strengthen our spiritual practice? Mm. Of course, uh, there are many different things that can be done. Uh, part of that would depend upon your spiritual practice. So you are speaking in particular, yes, about just sort of uh, the sort of uh, general spiritual practice, yes, not particular traditions and yes. all of that, yes? yes? And so what we would say to you first is that uh, the first way to start that is that upon awakening in the morning is have that be the first thing on your mind. The first thing on your mind is to remind yourself that you are a spiritual being that is now currently in a vehicle that is going to take you about your day. Think of it as your, uh, as your ca cab rides, yes? Uh, you get in and it, and it delivers you to where you're trying to go. So when, upon awakening, think about your day ahead. Think about where you are going and think about the way in which you would like to go through that day. Think about the ways that you would like to touch others. Think about the things that perhaps were left undone from the day before. So before you roll out of your bed and jump up and grab your cup of coffee or jump into your shower, spend three or five minutes and just take that time to feel your spirit in you, to recognize it to notice it, to notice that it's come back to you after traveling in the evening, yes, in your nighttime. And, and, and another good practice is uh, when you are out journeying in your nighttime is also when you awaken to uh, begin to jot that down, yes, because very often you'll bring back knowing, you'll bring back, if nothing else, uh, even bits and pieces of it, you will remember and it's another trigger to remind you that you are a spirit inhabiting a vehicle right now. And so, if you begin your day like that, it sort of, uh, what would you call, sets the tone, if you will, yes? Uh, to sort of remember who you are, to remember that. And so that when you're running into others, you can also remember that they too are a spirit inside of a vehicle, inside of a costume. And this time around, it makes it a little easier sometimes to deal with some of those people who might be uh, somewhat uh, challenging, if you will. Uh, and they may think that you are challenging as well. Uh, so, so by starting out remembering that, and then as you go through your day, taking time, taking time, whether it is five seconds or 15 seconds, to just sort of take a moment, take a breath, and, and feel that spirit in you again. Throughout the day, do this throughout the day. Because, because, again, and we will talk more in a moment about other techniques and all of that that you can do, but there's very simple ways to, to continue your spiritual development and evolvement. It is not always fancy techniques. It is not always things that are passed down through lineage after lineage. Those are very valuable techniques. But there are some very simple ones as well. That even in the mornings when you are in your uh, reflective, uh, your uh, reflective, um, what you call this thing that, the mirror, your reflective mirrors, when you're doing your hair, uh, when you are doing brushing your teeth, whatever it is that you are doing, take a moment there. And instead of just looking at how does my face look, how does my hair look, look into your eyes. Really look. And say good morning. <laughs> good morning. Aren't we gonna have fun today? And I'm not saying this in a way of saying, oh, here are some great uh, affirmations for you to say. I am saying, greet that spirit of yours. Greet it. Merge with it. Notice it. See it. You will notice when you begin practicing this that very often, when you look into the mirror, you don't really look into your eyes. Just as very often, as you walk through the, your world and people are looking at you or you are looking at them, you are not always looking into each other's eyes. You may look at them, you may look around their face, but really when you look deeply into their eyes, without saying anything, that is when you feel your soul's touch. That is when, for many of you, you may feel even tears come up. Do that with yourself as well. Make that connection. Again, it is another way to sort of set the stage, if you will, for your day. 
and, and do that as many times as you can think to do it throughout your day. And of course, also, we of course are going to advocate that you do things such as meditate. There are many different forms of meditation. Many different forms. Uh, many different ways that you can sort of center yourself. Do those types of things. Because very often your world is so busy, 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 busy. And it's so easy with the best of intentions even to get lost in that busyness. To not take the time to stop and just sit. Very often, people will work very hard in your world now, day in, day out. Though people have always worked hard in the world, this is different. It's just kind of a rushing and almost kind of getting nothing done many times. Uh, do not be mistaken into thinking that this generation or, or these last few generations are the only ones that have worked hard. Because, again, even when we go back to... Uh, tribal communities and that, they were working all of the time as well. But there were times when they came together. There were times when they sat alone or with a spirit of an animal. Or that they came together around the fire. And they would share their stories. They would share perhaps a meal or a pipe. These are the moments, these are the times when that connection remains. Now, many of you uh, go about your day all day long and you come home and you sit in front of your computer uh, devices or you sit in front of your uh, television devices or any number of other devices and you say to yourself, ah, yes, now I shall relax. But you are not relaxing when there's constantly a stimuli going in through the eyeballs of yours and into the brain. So you may feel more relaxed because you sit still. And uh, we enjoy, many of you humans, uh, when you are watching these many different devices, you have this sort of look that we say is not nirvana, uh, but if we may uh, demonstrate for you. <laughs> And so, uh, what we say is that uh, nirvana would look a little bit more like the uh, have a smile, and there would be peacefulness, you see. Or at least being centered would bring that, yes? <clears throat> and so, taking that time, shutting some of that out, walking in nature. Now, in your world, it is getting ready to... Uh, uh, get a little colder, yes? You are getting ready to have your lovely snow and all of that, um, which is quite beautiful from the other side, anyway. Uh, and so some of you may, in fact, enjoy walking in that snow. Some of you may not. Uh, but what we would say to you, then, is if, if you are someone who does not enjoy walking in that snow, uh, to, to find other ways to connect with nature. Perhaps on your warmer days you could go out and maybe not walk, but just at least be there. Or perhaps you buy more plants and put them in your home, or <coughs> things such as this to... <clears throat> we are working for vocal cords tonight, you see. She's starting to... Uh, this is not us, this is her. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but perhaps you find other ways to spend that. And again, even with your animals, uh, keep in mind also you can call nature into you. You can call in the nature spirits. You can call in the spirit of the animals, even if they aren't physical. If you are allergic to certain animals, you can call in their spirit and they can come. You can call in the spirit of the trees. You can call in the spirit of the beings, of the fairy folk, of the gnomes, of the elves or any other name that you might have for them, or any tradition you might have for them. These beings are just as you, just as you are not solid matter, nor are these beings, just as your spirit can move uh, through the ethers, not only during your sleeping time, but... Here's a great announcement. You can leave even when you're sitting right here, yes? And not only when you're meditating. There can be times when you are present in your physical body and there's another part of you that is out exploring something else. 
And so, so you can stay in touch with the spirit of things. But it takes much time, and quite frankly, it takes discipline. And this is the type of discipline that human beings seem to have difficulty with right now, because you get so restless when it's quiet. When it's quiet, you go to sleep. Yes? Uh, because sometimes when it's too quiet, all of the noises, all of the little things that are in here start getting dislodged and rattling up inside of you. Some of those things we were talking about only moments ago. And, and they begin to come up and you begin to hear them. And so quickly you may jump up and go put on your television station. Or you may lay down and just go to sleep instead of allowing that to come up. There's, there's so much uh, uh, stuff. There's anger. There's grief. There's all of this stuff. And it's collective as well in, in your uh, sort of world on your earthen plane. So many of you do not allow yourselves to express it, to feel it, to emote it. Because you are afraid it will take you over. And what we say to you is that when you're not doing it, it is then that it is controlling you. There is something uh, that has happened in the last few hundred years or so where you humans have been taught that you need to keep it together. Yes, that is a lovely, happy saying that many of you say to keep it together. I'm just going to pull myself up by my bootstraps, yes, and I'm going to keep it together. And while we say to you certainly, certainly that when things happen, as we have also said, you must keep walking forward. But sometimes you need to walk forward with your grief. Sometimes you may need to wail. Sometimes you may need to scream and yell and stomp your feet a little bit. We're not saying to project that at others. We're saying to let it move through you so that you may release it. In your world, where we are right now sitting with you in this sort of, uh, uh, what do you call this, North America? Yes? yes. Uh, there is so much sickness. Physical and emotional and spiritual sickness. Because for so long, you have stayed away from your feelings. That now, when you have feelings because you've stuffed them so long and they start to come out differently because you don't let them come all the way out, then you are giving, you are giving things to stop the feelings. <clears throat> Push it down a little bit further. And so that is telling you that something is wrong. Just by doing that, they're saying that when you have a feeling, something is wrong. How many times do you say to your friends, I do not know what is wrong with me today. I am feeling sad. Well, why must you start the sentence like that? You are, you are telling yourself that something is wrong with you. Well, there probably is. And that something that is going on in you is something that needs to come up so that you pay attention to the places and the ways of the things that you need to change in your life in order to not feel that anymore. And so it is, it, you, these, these things are sort of given to, to keep you away from that. You see, so another thing that you can do today is be real with yourself. We are not advocating that when your boss upsets you, that you necessarily go and scream at them and say that spirit told you to express yourself and perhaps start throwing things. We are not saying this is the way. But what we are saying is that anger, right? Anger is something that comes up in you. Anger is something that comes up that is an opportunity to create change, to affect change. Whether it is in you, and sometimes it is, because perhaps you're angry that your ego has been hurt, or you're angry, but always underneath even that. If you follow it backwards and underneath even that, there's still a place in you that, that sort of becomes angry because of a fear that you are not good enough, or a fear that you are not safe, or a fear. So, so when you can get in touch with those fears, then you can take decisive action to change that which isn't serving you. It does not mean that you won't still have fear. It does not mean that you will even have a guarantee, for there are no guarantees. So, so doing these types of things, very often spiritual practice is thought of only as uh, sitting cross-legged like this, yes? And stretching our bodies into all of these poses. And while those are some means to, to tap into that center in us, to tap into the spirit of things. Spiritual pathway also means walking differently in the world. You see? 
So, so as you're going through the day, noticing these things, doing these things we spoke of earlier, and as you're ending your day, taking the time to center yourself, taking your time to reach out to those beings that you connect with. Again, whether they're your ancestors, whether they're the, the nature spirits, whether they are the angelic beings, whether they're the 82nd or the 83rd or the 69th or the 73rd regime or airborne or what have you, you see? It does not matter. What matters is that you're replenishing. What matters is that you are remembering. And when you do those things, you will walk differently through the world. As long as you continue to do these things, as long as you continue, that when you are asking for a connection to, to those beings out here, when you are asking for guidance from those higher beings, that you are doing so in a way that is sincere and with an open heart. Keep in mind that, that what you are asking for you may not always get. This is very important. In, in your culture, we wish to address this briefly, and then we will sort of tie up our loose ends on this topic, if you will. Uh, in your culture, uh, and in many of the, the sort of uh, pervasive uh, religious traditions here in North America, again, and in this time of yours, uh, is, is that one must reach to this being and ask for favor, yes? Uh, please grant me this, please grant me that. Please grant wellness to my friend. Please grant. And what we say to you is that, that although we are not advocating that you not use prayer, affirmation, or connection, but what we are saying is keep in mind that sometimes what you believe is the best thing for yourself or another being may not in fact be. And so, and that there isn't one distinct being up there that is granting wishes, right? This is your, uh, what you call, um, your Disney, this is your Disney version, yes? There's not a being up there granting wishes and deciding that this person deserves life and this person does not. This is not something separate from you, that this one deserves a new car, but that one didn't behave well enough for one. This is not how this works. This, as you know, has to do with your journey, with what you've come to learn, and all, with also whatever obstacles you have put in your way, and what things you need to learn to move them out of the way, to move more in flow, which may in fact mean that you don't want that new car anymore, you see. So, so again, this stuff can get a little bit uh, mixy and dicey, if you will, but... but there's many, many ways that you can fool yourselves into believing that you're living a spiritual life or that you're evolving spiritually merely because you're doing things by rote. And what we are saying to you is doing things by rote does not help you to evolve. You are welcome to stay right where you are. We do not judge that. Nor do we judge the religions, nor do we judge anyone doing anything by rote. But what we are saying is in terms of based on your query that you have asked about how do we stay connected, how do we develop spiritually, then what we are saying to you is it requires drastic, radical action every single day. And it's a choice every single day. Aren't you happy that you asked that query? <laughs> <laughs>